Guys, what would you do if I were to tell you that one of the easiest ways to keep all of your vassals in check is not by making them like you, but by making them vigorously hate you? Cause this is what we're getting in today. I'm gonna show you the OP mechanic that is Dread and how to use it in your everyday CK3 playthrough. Let's get right into it. The OP power of Dread comes from its ability to either intimidate or terrify your vassals. That depends on your vassal's boldness. And boldness itself is another metric that is dependent on your vassal's traits. For instance, a brave vassal will not be as, as intimidated or as terrified of you as, for instance, a coward vassal. That is always something to keep in mind because there's a very easy calculation getting in there whether or not someone will be intimidated or terrified by you. When your Dread level is 20 points above one of your vassal's boldness, he will be intimidated by you automatically. Intimidated means that he will not be likely to join any plot or any faction against you, but there's never 100% guarantee that he will not join a faction when he's intimidated. On the other hand, when one of your vessels is terrified by you, which happens whenever your dread level is 45 points above your vessel's boldness, he will not join any faction and any plot. You can be sure that when you, someone is terrified, you have a 100% guarantee that they will not do anything against you. What also makes this strategy so overpowered is that there are so many diplomatic bonuses that come along with intimidating and terrifying your vassals. There's a whole list about the bonuses you get when, ter when you're terrifying and intimidating your vassals. And as you can see, the only malice you will get is when you marry someone. Everything else is getting so much easier when everyone is afraid of you. And I know you're now gonna say, Shady, this all sounds nice and all, but how do you actually grow my dread? And this is where we're getting right into the gameplay section. We'll have a look at the Holy Roman Empire and the Byzantine Empire, and how dread saved those two empires from crumbling due to factions. Let's get right into it. Gaining Dread, interestingly, turned out much easier than I initially thought. The first thing we do when we get into a new campaign is quickly choose the Intrigue lifestyle. Choose one of two focuses in this case. Either choose the Skaldagri or the Intimidation focus. Both of them will give you decent Intrigue points, and the last one will also give you plus 30 Natural Dread, although this is not a must take, you can leave it or choose it at this point. This is actually a great opportunistic use of a lifestyle, which is something I talk more about in my Crusader Kings 3 lifestyle summary. If you want to, you can check it out, link is down there in the description. Once you have chosen your focuses, get out and quickly imprison one of your first vassals. You need to look out for a vassal that has a 100% chance of agreeing to your imprisonment sentence. Once you've found one, preferably a duke, you will be able to gain 10 to 15 dread from this first imprisonment. And now what you want to do is quickly torture him in your prison. Because torturing a vassal can give you, depending on his rank, up to 15 to 25 dread. And this is oftentimes already the tipping point to intimidate your vassals. Because a lot of your vassals will start off with zero boldness to begin with. And thus, getting them in prison with 10 dread and then torturing them with 15 dread already gives you 25 dread, which is more than 20. And as we remember, this means that your vassals will be intimidated if they didn't start off with any boldness to begin with. Having your vassals intimidated in this case also enables you to imprison them more easily and imprison more of them at the same time. And you see, we've got a vicious cycle going on right now. This will only spiral more out of control for your vassals as we go on with this. A problem that can arise during this strategy though is that your ruler may not have compatible traits for that. My ruler, for instance, the Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, was very compassionate towards his vassals, so it was the more difficult for him to imprison them all and torture them and execute them. As you can guess, this led to a few mental breakdowns, although with that the second perk of the right branch of the Torture Focus tree helped a lot, because per stress level we get plus 4 martial ability, plus 4 intrigue points, and plus 4 for powerness added to our skill points, which is totally worth it. When you've repeated those first few steps a few times and you have actually started off with a faction going at war against you, you can now go back into your faction tab and you can quickly see the member number of that faction dwindling down very, very quickly. A few people will never leave that faction because they have enough boldness that they will not be affected by any of your dread, but that is not true for most of your vassals. Most of your vassals will be by now unbelievably terrified and intimidated by you and they will never ever dare to fight against you in any kind of way. So you can be sure that from this point on your empire is safe as anything. Waging wars and expanding is actually one of the best ways right now to get new prisoners in to keep your dread level up because your dread level will gradually decay because you're above your natural dread. You can stop this though by going further down the torture focus tree and actually choosing the perk that grants you negative 1000 dread decay which will enable you 
to murder a few people, gain the dread from them and keep that dread for the rest of your playthrough. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. I'm gonna see you next week with a new video about Crusader Kings 3. Until then, see you around!